Got to start with COVID. Public health experts warn that the U.S. could hit almost half a million deaths from COVID-19 by the end of this year. And big news from California this afternoon as well. The first state, as you know, to issue a stay-at-home order at the start of the pandemic might just be doing it once again. Quick Takes Madison Mills has more on this latest development. So, Madison, give us uh, the latest on California's response to the spike in COVID cases. Right, Scarlett. So we're hearing this afternoon that California may go back into lockdown if ICU beds hit a tipping point. I just heard from Governor Newsom this afternoon. Let's take a quick listen to what he had to say. I hope people understand the magnitude of this moment. And that's why we are making this point very loudly today. If these trends continue, we're going to have to take much more dramatic, arguably drastic action. The order would be imposed in specific regions across the state based on ICU beds, so this wouldn't be just a catch-all for the entire state of California. The magic number here is 15%. So once a hospital hits only 15% availability for ICU beds, the governor is saying those regions will need to shut down. And it's also important to note, Scarlett, that there are some key differences in what that lockdown is going to look like this time around versus last time. Uh, The governor, as well as local mayors, have said that things like indoor retailers, for example, will be able to stay open at about 20 percent capacity, uh, even as a lockdown potentially moves forward. But we are hearing that California could go into another lockdown as soon as this week if these numbers continue to go up. Hasn't L.A. been doing some of this already? I I just wonder how it compares to what we're already seeing in L.A. and some other municipalities around the country. Exactly right, Scarlett. We've already seen L.A. go back into this stay-at-home lifestyle here. Things like indoor dining completely banned, which has caused a lot of duress across uh, Los Angeles County. Uh, Mayor Garcetti is really imploring residents to only hang out with people who are in their households to not even do kind of the pod technique that we've heard about throughout the pandemic, but to really just stay at home. One thing that's a little bit interesting and potentially confusing to residents, though, again, is the changes here, right? Things like golf, for example, or indoor shopping are allowed this time around. So residents are going to have to kind of adjust their understanding of what a stay-at-home order looks like. And to your point, Scarlett, these numbers are spiking across the country. We're seeing the Midwest being a huge hotspot like it has been for the past several weeks. Uh, States like Minnesota, for example, are experiencing a huge surge. And here in New York City, We're seeing a 5% positivity rate. Just the other week, Scarlett, we were talking about hitting 3%, and now we're already up to 5 Yeah, it it moved up really quickly. All of these, Maddie, are local responses. At a federal level, what's happening? Because to me, it feels like, or it seems like, the White House, the Trump White House, has kind of just given up. Right, Scarlett, I think about this all the time. At the start of the pandemic, I interviewed Dr. Tom Frieden, who is the former CDC director, and he told me that there are really two paths forward when you're handling a pandemic from the government's perspective, right? You can either lock down, institute intense public health measures to really uh, kind of drop the curve, like we've talked about a lot during this pandemic, Or you can kind of let the numbers spike and reach a sort of herd immunity. And to your point, it does seem like the United States strategy has shifted more towards the latter of those two practices. Uh, The Trump administration has been fairly silent on this surge in cases since his loss of the election. And now all eyes are on the Biden administration as he's put together his 13-member advisory council for responding to coronavirus and as he's expected to inherit the kind of huge task of distributing the COVID-19 vaccine, which is expected to be his kind of biggest issue on day one as he enters office. Yeah, and of course, no one knows how long it'll take to get to herd immunity. Sweden hasn't gotten there yet, and Dr. Fauci said it might, be not, it might not happen until next summer. Um, you mentioned President-elect Joe Biden coming into office in about 48 days. Can he do anything now to address the surge in COVID? 
Right, Scarlett. So Biden can't do anything from the federal level until he's actually in office, of course, but he's doing a lot to kind of prepare for a lot of action items to get done on day one. His transition team is in communication with federal health agencies. He's set up this advisory council, like we said. And also a big focus of his has just been this idea of trust building that we talk about all the time. He's focused on getting people on board to take the vaccine. Um, former President Obama announced that he would be comfortable taking the vaccine the other day, for example. So that's just part of Biden's strategy for kind of shifting the public messaging around the virus and getting people on board to really take on the personal responsibility needed to stop the spread. Yeah, not just uh, President Obama. I remember Bill Clinton and George W. Bush as well saying that they too would uh, be willing to get the vaccine. Madison, thank you so much. Madison Mills with the latest here on COVID. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.